Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And with your permission, I'd like to begin with the interview. Absolutely, Rehan. Look forward for this lovely interaction this evening. Same. So the first question I have is, how do you see the evolving role of travel agencies in the era of online booking platforms and do-it-yourself travel arrangements? So Rehan, uh, one of my biggest feelings, and I keep reiterating this when I meet all my partners across the world, I think the online and the offline ecosystem of travel are here to stay. They will coexist. Uh, for a simple reason is because for a matured market like the US, the business still is 50% offline. And, you know, they came in the online world much, much earlier in game uh, than India. Nice. Second, um, if I, and I, if I, you know, break the pyramid of the travel industry, the top is the amateur travelers today who have seen London, Paris, you know, I've been to Thailand many times, etc. cetera. Um, the second pyramid is the ones who have now looking at London, Paris, Turkey, you know, destinations like these. And then the lower pyramid, which is the emerging India, the young India today, or the ones who are the first aspirant travelers today who were, want to travel outside India. Just to give you a number, there are 160 million passports in India, wow. out of which only 26 million trips happen. So you can imagine 130 million people have never traveled out of India. So that is a new India, which I believe will start from a short haul destination like Dubai, Thailand, Maldives, etc. And then obviously come to the second tier and the top tier. The top tier and the lower tier are the ones today are the ones who are actually want assisted travel. So that is basically the travel operator, the travel agents. Yeah. One, the high end wants to explore new destinations and they are pampered. So they have the money to spend. The lower one is the one, the ones who are emerging are the ones who need that help. Right. Yeah. Is the middle one today, which is now going to an online, what, you know, are tech savvy, who have been to the world, are confident about their sales and the travel and so on and so forth. So in my opinion, uh, the industry is here to stay, uh, both online and offline, right? It's just not about the airline business. There are complex iteries. There are large iteries, uh, you know, such as Scandinavia, such as Tanzania, you know, which people need help and handholding. Uh, visas, you need appointments, you need help from the travel agents. So there is no reason that, you know, the travel operators offline will perish. I think they're here to stay and they'll only continue to grow, especially in a country like India, which obviously is seeing a booming travel over the next few years. Definitely. So the next question I have is, can you elaborate on the impact of emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and blockchain on the travel industry and how your agency is leveraging these advantages or advances? So for the travel industry, these words, blockchain and artificial intelligence obviously came in three, four years back. Right. Um, the industry is now looking at adopting them. Some of the companies in India in specific are looking at AI and what they can use this, you know, for their best leveraging, you know, in terms of supply, demand, what they can help also for their consumer. The same goes for blockchain as well. But I still believe there's a lot has to be done in the industry, right? Uh, people will continue to look at these two technologies, the emerging technologies. And eventually, you know, I'm sure someone will be a winner here. But this is something which I believe is the next wave, you know, which will come in the travel technology space. And obviously, everybody will adopt, at least the leading players, you know, who I believe will adopt this very quickly. Right. Definitely, because I know it's a new thing. So not many yeah. people have adopted it already. So Absolutely. the next question is, what strategies do you employ to foster strong partnerships with airlines, hotels and other travel service providers? And how do these benefits, how do these relationships benefit your customers? So, at our company, you know, what we are trying to solve is basically for the clients. Now, that's my demand side. Uh, as a matter of fact, actually, uh, you're asking for supply, which is airline hotels. Mm -hmm. So imagine yourself, Ryan, that you are in a nice five-star hotel and you want to come into India market and you're not a global chain. How would you do that? You know, you need yeah. to trust who you're dealing with. It's just not Delhi and Mumbai. There's a plethora of travel agents, right, in yeah. India. You can't be walking every street to get demand, right? Yeah. How do you penetrate that market? How do I get the payment from that market? So these are these problems today, which a hotel or an airline has, especially which is looking at India as a serious market. What we are doing here is actually getting the distribution to you with one click. Right. The payment is secured. So there's understanding and relationship which TBO has. Second is you have the the advantage of us settling our payments, right? Because obviously, you know, yeah. we can remit money to the RBI channels and the banks and so on and so forth. Plus the penetration into tier two cities, into the other cities apart from Delhi, Bangalore. So imagine one hotel looking at India is almost covering his playbook just because he is talking to companies like TBO. 
you know, who are bringing the distribution channel of all large, small, medium travel operators, you know, which I think is very, very effective today, rather than just doing it yourself. So I think that's the value prop which we bring to the supply, you know, be it hotels and the airlines. Definitely, definitely. So the next question I have is that your company has many startups. How do you identify gaps in the market that need to be fulfilled? Moreover, in your opinion, what is the future of startups and startup culture in per se now in the 21st century? So I think the startups today in the travel space are evolving. There are people you know, who have tried new things. Some of them failed. Some of them are still working hard and trying to succeed. Um, I think what today the startups need to do is build a niche. I think that's something which is missing, I feel. Uh, niche can be in many forms. It can be in terms of creating, curating packages, adventure sports, adventure travel, religious travel, uh, cruise lines, for example, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think the typical hotel here, I think the space which is pretty well positioned now, I think there are great companies, you know, which are already leading this space. But I think somebody has to think out of the box to crack something which is still not online or still not taking the tech route. I think that's where the new startup should come in. Uh, if you're doing the same, um, you know, hotel air, I think, um, you know, it's time that either you will shrink or you need capital desperately or one of the guys like us or somebody will acquire you. I think that's where I think the startup ecosystem should be penetrating is the new so-called solutions, you know, which are coming in the new emerging travel space, in my opinion. Definitely. Just a quick follow-up question from that is that what is your strategy towards, strategy towards kind of acquiring startups? So any uh, startups you're currently looking at acquiring an example? Typically, you know, we believe in taking some sweat equity, you know, and obviously invest some money, you know, just as an initial seed funding because I think what value we bring to a startup is a lot of um, you know, synergies which we can help them, you know, we can, they can leverage our distribution system, they can leverage our credibility, right. um, you know, which it takes time for somebody to build. If this comes to you, you know, overnight, I think speed to market today is very, very critical. And I think that's where TBO adds a lot of value for any startup joining hands with us, uh, you know, you know, you know, part of our kind of minority slash whatever stakes we have. Right, definitely. So the next question is a little on the lighter note. So what are a few hobbies you pursue that may have or may not have actually affected your entrepreneurial journey? So I think I, I love to meet uh, people. I think it takes my stress away, right? I think I love to spend sometimes time with myself, which I hardly get, uh, you know, which whether it's watching TV, watching cricket, uh, you know, it takes my, my time away. I think spending time with family also kind of de-stresses me. But as a hobby, obviously, I, I'm a guy who is a regular workout guy. I go to the gym at least four times a week. And I play cricket uh, at a corporate level, which is pretty serious, either on a Saturday or Sunday. But I play literally 40 matches in a year, which is also a big stress buster. Because when I'm on the ground, I just forget everything. I think so. These are things which are very important, uh, you know, to take you away from your day-to-day -day challenging, exciting routines. You know, so I think that's a big uh, hobby for me, I think. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, 40 matches is a lot. Even in just yeah, so, so my final question is that what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur who, who wants to break into the specific travel industry? So I think, um, uh, you know, companies like ours and many successful were not built overnight. I think, you know, people think uh, it's a two year story, three year story. It doesn't. I think it takes decades or 20 years or 15 years to be a real solid company, you know, which is meaningful in the travel technology ecosystem. Um, so don't cut it short. I think uh, technology is a, is, is, is a must, must. I think that is something which should be the first thing on your table. I think hire the right team. I think what people do is sometimes they don't have the right sources and then, you know, the, or I would say the missing part of the puzzle, right? Be it tech, be it ops, be it finance. I think your initial founding team should be something which I think is extremely, extremely robust, is extremely talented, you know, have might not have the experience, but are very sharp. Yeah. And I think that synergy within that team, I think is extremely important because what I realize, somebody will not, will not have a great tech guy, some might not have an ops guy, you know, so I think who captured that, I mean, stays back. I think that's where the challenge, in my opinion, stays. Raising capital might not be tough in today's world, but I think respecting capital is the biggest challenge. What I realize a lot of startups today who have failed is because money came to them very easy, but they just spent money, I think, in things which were not, uh, which were not making sense. And I think that's where you know you really start losing capital. And I think capital should be value, you know, irrespective of the size you are today. Uh, and I think that's something which is the basic fundamental. I think which a lot of good companies are stuck by, you know, and that's where where they are today. They've seen COVID, they passed through COVID, they're still standing tall. I think because I think preserving cash, uh, you know, and capital was something which I think is a very big secret sauce apart from great talent and tech. 
Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing that amazing information. I will definitely keep it in mind in the future and today. Perfect. So that Perfect. thank you.